We are here in Singapore, but we only have a couple of days. So we've armed ourselves with your list of iconic dishes and places we have to eat them. That list is the only plan that we have. So let's rock up to a few places, see how we get on. So back home, we'd greet people with, how you doing, how you feeling? Here in Singapore, have you eaten yet? Ready for an old favorite? Mm, laksa, laksa. Now, laksa is a really, really fragrant, spicy, but also creamy because of coconut broth over noodles, often bean sprouts, and then a mixture of different things, often fish, and we've got prawn in this one, but also tofu and egg and a whole bunch of other stuff. I've had a lot of laksa in the UK, but this is traditionally a Malaysian dish. It's one of Singapore's neighbors and like one of many cuisines that become this real kind of hybrid cuisine that you find here in Singapore. He's trying so hard not to say melting pot because we banned the term melting pot. Drink. <laughs> you said it. I said it twice, didn't I? <laughs> in particular, what I like about the story of this place, so old Nyonya, uh, is a husband and wife team who started in the corporate world and eventually just went enough of this and set up here in uh, Maxwell Food Centre, husband and wife team doing what they love, having already kind of had the corporate side of life. This is now just back to the things that matter, food. Oh wow. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow. So creamy. That coconut milk or coconut cream that's in there is sensational. And then you get hit with the heat of chili. Oh. And it's rounded off by fishiness. And I would say like the prawn shells and the prawn heads, it's that kind of shellfish flavour running through all of that rock. I feel like in the UK, when I've had laksa, a lot of times it feels like noodles, broth, toppings, and it's all quite separate. But that feels complete. Yeah. And I think without any one of those elements, it would change the entire dish. And I think beyond just the flavor, and that comes from balancing all those very fragrant, spicy, creamy kind of ingredients, I think it is a balance of texture because everything in that bowl has a different texture, a noodle, a bean sprout, some kind of egg omelette, but then also a boiled egg. You've got the shrimp, you've got some fish cake. It's all different textures. And that's something we probably don't do enough of in the UK. Genuinely delicious. And what happens is the spicy oil floats to the top. So when you do this, I'm going to hit the back of my first. <laughs> Still hungry? Yes, I've gone rogue. <laughs> Lift the cloche. Fried oyster cakes. Now we passed this stall whilst we were walking through the market and they looked amazing because they looked like oysters but they were deep fried. Got a bit closer, turns out the woman's been making them for 45 years. Just oyster cakes. She doesn't make anything else, just oyster cakes. They are a Fu Chow style beignet of oyster, prawn, pork mince and batter. And I think that is testament to Singapore, which is we're following all of your recommendations, but you can't find bad food. And sometimes just follow Jamie's nose. Cheers. Cheers. I'm excited for the texture of this, because I can't imagine it. A combination of really crispy and really wet, but not dissimilar to like a Yorkshire pudding batter. It's got crispy bits, you've got that kind of chewy, doughy bit, cooked dough for sure. But also you've got the moisture that's coming out of the mince pork and the seafood. It's got a crunch of peanut. That's so different to anything I've tried before. Personally, I love oysters. Fresh oysters, cooked oysters. So I'm always gonna like this. But I also feel if oysters not necessarily your thing, this is like a gateway. In yeah. Because you've also got the spring onion and the mince pork and the friedness, but you have still got that oyster brine and flavor all the way through it. I think that's great. Well, oh, fine. Like with all new foods, I tried to find something similar to like anchor my comparison to. And I'm really struggling. It's kind of part beignet, part economiaki, part scotch pancake, part uh, Yorkshire pudding. And it's, <laughs> it's got a little bit of everything in it, but it's uniquely unique. In translation, I think Ben's trying to say, I did a good job. As did the lady that's been doing it for 45 years. But I did a good job. Get to use the cloche. It just happened. We ordered fish head curry here at Sammy's Curry, and 
I mean, it's, it's almost a performance in itself. Banana leaf, biryani rice, two different vegetable dishes, and then that, which came to the table bubbling. I thought the banana leaf was a lovely placemat idea. I didn't realise it was actually the plate. Fish head curry, so it's been vastly suggested by you guys and everyone we've met while we've been here, uh, taking influence from the Indian culture that we see so much, especially in sort of little India and places around Singapore. Um, I mean, let's get stuck in. Look at how saucy this curry is. I feel like I want a plate with a lip <laughs> as opposed to a banana leaf. When you have something like a laksa here, the broth is full of that prawn head flavour, that shellfish and the prawn head. This is doing exactly that. It's a really fishy fish. And then you get the actual flesh of the white snapper as well. That is, here's a word I've not used on sorted before, sumptuous. That is a sumptuous curry. The sauce is almost like a gravy. Yeah. In terms of its consistency and its texture, it's so smooth. Obviously, it's quite spicy. There is, a, there is a lovely spice to it. But you're right, you've got that tomato-based tang, yeah. which is like heavily spiced. Lots of vegetables in it, okra, and it looks like some kind of gourd or squash. And then obviously, the head just sat there. It's a white snapper. At the moment, we've kind of taken the, the collar, the neck bit, so it's quite fleshy um, and absolutely delicious. A few bones in it, you pick around those, but the meat itself is brilliant. And the veg actually makes it quite sweet as well. And so you get that sweet, spicy combination. And with the fish on top of that, it's a whole package. Also, these things on the side, that is either a pumpkin, I would imagine, or a sweet potato. So that also is really sweet. The difference between, I think, ordering a curry back home is you pick like the meat first, and it's all about the chunks of meat with sauce. This is all about rice, veg, veg, veg in here, opera, and gourd. The flavour of the fish, a little bit of wonderful fish through it, but it's also it's almost like the, the bit of fish that often gets forgotten. It's a spectacle but not a novelty one. Yeah. It's an absolutely delicious spectacle. We've been in Singapore for a few days now, and I hadn't had a dish yet that challenged me, and I was waiting for one, and I thought this was gonna be it. I thought this was gonna be a, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. And I absolutely love it. Yeah. But it makes me wonder what dish is gonna challenge me now. I wonder if it needs to. Maybe Singapore's just full of great food. That's what I'm finding out. <laughs> Have you even been to Singapore if you haven't had chilli crab? Number one, that might be the biggest crab I've ever seen served up to us. A full kilo of mud crab in the classic iconic, and in this case, award-winning at Jumbo Seafood, chilli sauce. The dish was recommended by loads of you. This place was recommended too, and it's been Sort of doing chili crab since 1987, so it's as old as I am. The smell is unreal. You can smell the spice, but the richness as well. I am excited. So this is a dish we've actually cooked once before in the UK on a beach, and it's this wonderful blend of spices that's then kind of thickened with egg right at the end. So you get this kind of cross between. Uh, scrambled egg, egg drop soup, uh, and carbonara, and the way the egg thickens it and gives it a silky, rich viscosity. Even before we go anywhere near the crab meat itself, that sweet, tomatoey, tangy, kind of sweet and sour, spicy, it's not creamy, it's got the, the, the silkiness of egg, but it's super, super good. But that is a really nice blend of sweet, sour and spicy, all at the same time. Oh. <laughs> I got attacked by a glove. There's a handful of kind of those classic Southeast Asian spices, mm. and then almost like a, a ketchup through it. It's a spicy, tangy tomato sauce that's then enriched with egg, and obviously you've got the chilli in there. And like, there's a texture in here that possibly is candle nut. Oh, really? And then if you get into a claw, you get this big chunk of crab meat. Which is beautifully sweet, salty. It's a saltwater crab, and so good. Definitely not as spicy as I was expecting it to be. It's a 
lip and tongue tingler. Yep. But it's not a blow your head off spice in any way at all. And you see the colour of it and you presume that's from chilli, but actually yeah. I think a lot of it is tomato based, like tomato ketchup is kind of how we make it, but that sweet, tangy, chutney, vinegar, tomato flavour. So good. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm in my happy place. So whilst there is some crab meat through all of the sauce, you've kind of got to get involved and crack into a claw or two to get the real meaty sweet stuff. In comparison to the Hawker Centre food we've been eating, this is relatively expensive, but that's because actually if you're going to do it, you want one of the bigger crabs, because then in return for the effort of cracking it, you get really lovely chunks of crab, whereas the smaller crabs, which would be cheaper, not so much, same amount of shell. I'm having a lovely time. Oh, yeah. This feels like the opposite end of the scale to a lot of the hawker market and street food stuff that we've been doing. It's just as delicious. It's the unashamed mess that you make as you get stuck into really, really delicious food. If you're coming for chili crab, you know you're getting stuck in. It's a full on sensory experience. You're touching it, you're hearing it, you're smelling it. Best of all, you get to taste it. You can't come to Singapore and not go to Satay Street. During the day, this is just Boontat Street or Boontat Road. During the night, they close it off and it becomes Satay Street. All of the satay vendors line up and the smells are unbelievable. You order what you want, pick it up, come here, eat it, have a beer. What more could you ask for? And whilst there are 14 vendors to choose from, they're all doing satay, their own version of marinated meat on sticks, cooked over really hot char grill to get that wonderful uh, char and sear and colour, and served with a peanut-based spiced Malaysian uh, sauce. Now I'd love to tell you that we tried all 14 and this one was our favourite. But we didn't have time for that, so we went to the one that was busiest and had the biggest queue, number seven. This is going to be odd, but cheers. cheers. Ooh, that is a crunchy sauce. Look at that. All you have is a wobble of texture. You've got fatty bits of meat, you've got really crispy char in places. And the marinade itself and that kind of crunchy nutty sauce, all the texture before we even get to the flavour. The flavour is it's unlike any other satay that I've had before. I, I feel like it's got that kick of spice at the end, which is absolutely delicious, but it's a far, with the texture, it's a far more rounder flavour. So you've got all the usual suspects, kind of garlic, chilli, galangal, lemongrass, kaffir, it's all of those that make it not just spiced and spicy, but wonderfully fragrant. And I would say, food aside, which is excellent, it's the whole experience in the atmosphere, because the fact that you've just got the smoke in the air, the smell, the sounds of a busy, bustling street, all that comes together into absolute deliciousness. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Oh, that prawn's got a spice to it. They, they really have got a kick. I saw them sprinkling something from a magical dusting tin over the top. That's what we're tasting. It's a fiery, fiery spice. What I like is it's quite a social thing. You cannot order satay for one. The smallest amount was this amount, which is for two. And then it goes up to like, you can buy 120 sticks at a time for friends to share and dig into. Very small each one. They pack a punch of flavour. For me, it is this that makes it so special. For me, this is a full-on satay experience. It's got the food, it's got the atmosphere, it's got the smells, the sights, the sounds. It's a must try. In summary, Singapore, it's clean, it's green, and the food scene is me. Nice, nicely done. Thank you. Obviously, we've only scratched the surface of the places and all of your suggestions, but comment down below what else should we have eaten, what did you enjoy that we ate, and do we have to come back to do the rest? Of course we have to come back. I don't think that's a question. Yes. Thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up.